Do you guys have this icon here in front on, on your machine, that little thing? In this case, come check. It should be on your on your desktop, but this you you append it to the bottom. Come check. Click on come check. Okay, come check. Come check is your energy code calculation. I believe Minnesota accepted multiple states accept it as a as a way of proving that you have paid attention to Mother Nature. Um, and you use the only you only use the certain amount of lights that you want. Okay, so it says uh, everybody. Can you open this one first? When you are you guys? Everybody's looking at the same screen I'm looking at. Yes, Andrew, Carrie, you guys, Joe and Adam, Zach. Okay, cool. With well, the first thing you come, this is a software that will tell you if you meet the energy code in terms of calculation or not. Very simple to use, very simple. If you follow up with me, you're gonna find it very simple. The first thing you wanna decide which state are you in, right? That's easy. So um, we have, I think we have uh, Minnesota here, right? And which, so this decide which state we are in and which um, um, Minneapolis, which city? So where is Minneapolis? So go go set yourself Minnesota, Minneapolis, will you? Uh, uh, there's Minnesota City. I didn't know that there's a Minnesota City. Going up, okay. Minneapolis, okay. Can you guys set yourself Minnesota, Minneapolis? Everybody knows why, right? Okay, so we're here. Did they say Minnesota? Oh man, do we have a Minnesota? Where's that? Minnesota. Where's Minnesota? Minneapolis. Minnesota. This is Minnesota, right? I'm in the right state. Yeah, Minnesota, Minneapolis. Cool. All right. So that's now you don't have to do that, but if you come to the codes, it defaults you to all the codes we're using 2009 IECC code. That's the energy code that we're using right now. You don't have to know that unless you become an energy expert. That's where if it's not, if you go to work in a place where it's not, the first thing you're gonna ask yourself. Which one of these are they using? Are they using ASHRAE 90.1 standard or are we using 2009 IECC? I think we are. We might have to switch. I believe we are. Why would we not use 2012? Because you have to go through the adoption. Oh, this is like NEC code book. It has to go through adoption and so forth. Yeah, I, th I believe what we're using right now. Can you guys do, do me a favor? I'm not sure because it changes all the time. But what we have done in the past, can you guys use um, this one? 90 point, this is ASHRAE 90.1. Click on that one. One more time. Go to the code and click on ASHRAE. This is ASHRAE. ASHRAE 90.1 2010, the most strict one. Can you guys see that? Click on that one. Now, which one are you going to use? This is your default. I believe that's the default that we use, ASHRAE. There's the international. And there's Ashley, there's a New York, uh, or Minnesota it used to be here as a list, has their own code, but I believe if you meet 90.1 Ashley, you are good for Minnesota. So the first question they're going to ask is call the city or the state and ask them which energy code are you guys adopting? Is it Ashley 90.1 2001 or 2007 or 10 or is it IEC one of these? So you, okay, that's your start point. Cool? Done. So then you sit yourself here. Um, cool, we got the code. We got the, where we are. And then we're going to go edit detailed project. Okay, the title of our project, um, we're going to call it commercial project. Commercial project. Cool. And address, I want you guys, I don't want to fill this information yet. I'm just going to put, the, the, put anything here. Um, and you can fill this one at any time. Just put something here. You can fill it at any time. Um, five five four three one zip code permit. You can you can put the permit here. What permit you pulled for this job? One two three. You can put the permit date. It was uh, ten o three at twelve. Um, and you guys will put the dates. Put any date in this. You know the date that we pulled the permit. Let's say the date that we started the class. When did we start the class? Anybody remember? It was week one, October 1st. So 10, 01, um, 
2012. Now, why this is important, Kerry? Because all this information will show up when you report. All the information that you're going to do, it's going to show up in your report. You're going to submit this report to the state. So important to fill this, this report, guys. So why don't you put a couple of addresses here? Address is 818. You put your own address for the job, Dunwoody Boulevard. And uh, we don't want address two. The city is Minneapolis. OK? And the zip code 55431, 55403, I believe, is here. Uh, 55403. Okay, so we filled. Any notes other than the inspector is jerk here? Um, then, so you fill this information, then we go to owner agent. You're going to put the owner first name. I want you guys to fill this information. Remember that the sheet that you have based on who the owner and who the but I don't want to fill this information carry yet because you guys are going to work on this. So I'm just going to put the owner here, Chad, Curdy, and you're going to fill the, um, uh, oops, Curdy is here. You're going to fill that a little bit of it. Can you guys just put something here so it can show up? You can edit this at any place, Don, Don Woody. And you put, huh? the owner, when you guys schedule the, the project, remember on the tab lock, you're supposed to put an owner. So if you haven't done that, add an owner, and you fill all this information. Then designer, contractor, uh, designer, who's a designer? Chad um, and Kennedy and company, done with Kaji Technology, and you fill this information. Okay? I don't want to go over all this stuff. Just say for the sake of the time, do you guys know how to edit this at any time? Okay, this okay yet? All right, so here's that. Can you guys see where the information that you inputted is sitting right here? Now, at any time, at any time, Darren, you want to edit it, what do you do? Click here, and it takes you to this window, and you edit it. I need thumbs up from everyone that we're good with that. Okay, you don't have to fill this information. So, we pick the location that we're in, we pick the code, we put information about the building. Now, your question is, are you doing new construction or addition or alteration? We are doing what? New, new construction. Good. good. All right, so let's move into new construction. When you get into this area, here's your option. Your option is to do it building area method by the whole building, or you can do it area category. Why do people use area category? Area category, guys, will give you a better, better outcome. Put it this way. It makes you meet the code better. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? It, so if you have an office, you apply the category office. If you have a hallway, you can apply the category for the hallway. Cool? So your option is going to be area. So now let's go. When it comes to the area, let me grab my areas and let's go. Um, let's go for areas. So the first area I want to, so area. Um, let's grab the first area. The first area I want to do, if you click here, it expands all the areas that the energy code allows you to have foot candle, uh, what per square foot, by the way. Energy code is concerned by the what per square foot that you have. They want to limit you to what per square foot. Okay. I'm going to go to the hallways. Uh, well, let's, let's, you know what, let's use, um, um, let's use a um, bathroom if you can. Okay, here's your option. Automotive, banks, let's go see if we can have a commercial building because our building is commercial, right? Uh, common spaces. Um, these are all the options that you have, and that's where you guys are going to spend some time trying to find manufacturing, uh, packaging, office, post, no, um, post offices, um, warehouses, okay, um, court, uh, common spaces. Common spaces. Common spaces, you're going to find a lot of things in common spaces. Can you guys, if you go common spaces, you can have auditorium, uh, classroom, lecture, conference, meeting, Corridors, uh, most of the stuff, dining rooms, electrical, uh, blah, 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 general, elevator room, recreational, restrooms, uh, storage, all these are common space areas. Uh, do you guys have office area? Where is it? In right here? Thank you. Thank you. Office enclosed, office, and open, open plain office. You almost going to find everything that you need where? Right in this area. Let's go do it for office. 
enclosed. Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, office enclosed. Okay, here's my office enclosed. So the type of the category is called office enclosed. Cool. This one, um, so let's go back into which area this is office enclosed. I'm gonna go make it for this area. Um, go to CAD. I'm gonna go to office enclosed here and I'm gonna do it for this office. Can you guys see this office? What's the name of this office? 124. I'm gonna go back and do it for 124. Uh, if I can find it, here you go. Um, oops, no, no, not again, Chad. Why does it? Okay. I have two copies open now. No, I don't want to do that. Um, okay, so one, two, four. So can you guess the area description? Could you please write the area description? It's going to be one, two, four. Everybody got that? You guys are the kings. One, two, four. What's the area? Now, first the description, then the, what's the square foot of this area? Okay, let's go back to CAD. Now, this is where you need CAD, guys. You need CAD. Grab here. Okay, let us let me show you how to use the area in CAD. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We're going to find the area. So type area, area, enter, and put your ortho on, and grab one corner here, one corner, and don't be, don't sweat it too hard if you miss some little thing here and there. And click here, and click here, and, oops, I think I closed it. Um, enter. I will click it and enter. Can you guys see what the square foot of the area here? Everybody can see it at the bottom. 170. Um, and please, Kerry, please bring it to the to the closest foot. So it's 170 square foot. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Can I do it one more time? Should I do it one more time? Let's do it one more time. Area. Huh? Yep, 180 square feet. Let's do area. Click here. Oops. Um, area, enter, square feet. And grab the area here. And hit enter. 100, I have 175 now. I don't know where I click, but 175. Again, just the interior, guys. Be a little bit. Andrew, are you okay? Okay, if you guys want to talk, you can talk outside, serious. I mean, you don't have to be here if you, if you don't want to be here, for any one of you guys. Anybody who doesn't want to be here, you have the right to leave at any time. He's going to be staying with us in the summer. You see a good example here. So, okay, so the area is 175, please. So, um, so my area for this is, uh, square feet is 175. Everybody got that one? 175 square feet. So let's go back to the project. And type 175. 175. Everybody got that one area? Okay. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We got the area. Let's go take. So then your job is to build all the areas in your building the same way I did. Let me take another example, a hallway. I'm going to take another example, a hallway. Now, how do you add another area here? Very easy. Can you guys see where it says add here? Add. Here's another category. I need a hallway. So common spaces, corridors, um, eight foot wide um, or less, right? Our corridors are eight foot wide or less, the hallways, right? Uh, don't you think that this is the closest to a hallway that I can get corridors, right? Everybody okay with this? Grab this category. Now these categories, guys, don't sweat it too hard. Find the one closest to what you need. Cool? If it's, I mean, don't, the exact one, the closest is good enough. Okay, let me see the hallway name. Now I'm going to go back to Revit and grab one hallway and do it for that hallway. Uh, CAD, let's go do it for this easy. I'm, I'm picking the easy, leaving the hardest one for you guys. Look at this hallway here. Can you guys see this hallway? Corridor 11112. Um, I'm going to go do the area for this boy. Area, enter, and grab one corner of that boy. Um, where am I here? Right here. And the other area, and grab this here, and all the way. Oh, are you just going to the door, or are you going all the way to the other end? I'm going all the way, no, to the door. I'm, I'm picking this, only this one here. Okay. 
Well, let's do this. And again, enter. Don't sweat it too hard. And that will get me how much? Uh, 270 square feet, right? 270 square feet. Everybody got that one? 270. So that's all what you need from here. So I need 270. Uh, oops. Uh, the name, what was the name again? What's the name of the corridor? 112. 112. And 270. 270. Okay? Done. Here's the corridor. Cool. I did two things. You guys are going to do every single area. The same way. If I need another one, and. You guys get the rhythm of it? Everybody got the rhythm? Okay, now let's move into adding fixture. First, you need to add the area. Second, you need to add the fixture. Any question about adding areas and finding the right area? Go to the common space. Almost all of them are under common space. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Cool? Um, if you can see exterior lighting zone here, guys, down here, we're not talking exterior. Okay, you're done here. You're done. Build all your rooms here. When you're done, done. The next step, you need to go to envelope. Can you get, this is project. Under envelope, envelope, these are for the architects. They talk about what type of walls and insulation for the walls. Leave it alone. When you go to, in, we need interior lights or exterior lights or mechanical. Are we mechanical engineers here? No. So you're going to drop mechanical. This is where the mechanical guys put their mechanical system, guys. We're going to drop that. We're not going to touch again. Envelope. This is where the architects are going to put their walls and ceiling insulation. Are we architects? No. So we are going to be our first project, set the area. Second, we're going to switch into interior and next to exterior. So I did set a couple of rooms. Can you guys see the rooms show up here when I set them up? Everybody can see they show up here. So I set two rooms as an example. They show up here. I'm interior. I'm going to start now putting my fixtures. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We put the rooms the area and the name of the room. Now I'm going to go flip a couple of fixtures underneath it. Cool? This is how this works. I'm going to go work on 124. What was 124? That's closed office, right? 124. Click on 124. Make sure it's dark like this. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Now we need to go see what type of fixtures did we use in 124. What type of fixtures? 124 was a closed office. Um, 124 as a closed office. I use fixture J3. J3. Uh, what type of fixture did you guys use? Everybody got the type of fixture that we used? What was the fixture that we used? T5. Okay. It's a fluorescent T5 HO, right? Okay. Uh, the fixture that we use in this place is indirect uh, 5T8. Okay, so it's a fluorescent. First of all, is it compact fluorescent? Is it uh, linear fluorescent? It is a linear fluorescent. Before you go there, guys, here's your option. Either linear, compact, high intense discharge, incandescent, God forbid, halogen, or track lights. Almost always you're going to be in linear lights or uh, maybe one or two fixtures incandescent and high intensity for the parking lot. So let's go linear fluorescent. When you go linear fluorescent, here's your option. What uh, the options are, this is um, uh, lamp description, what pure lamp, the what pure lamp. Do you guys remember the fixture that you used? What's the what pure lamp for your fixture here? Can you give me that one, please? The what pure lamp, it should be like 32 watts on the name. 54, here you go. Uh, T20. So is it 22, here's it, 34, uh, 4, okay, start with the length. The length is 48. Your 48, did you guys pick up the um, T5 Super, and I think you should be able to THO 44, here's your option. So it's 48 inches, 4 feet fixtures, right, lamps. So that's your start point. Then after the start point, here's the type. Did you use T8? I think we used uh, H in that particular one, we, T5. Uh, T5. Um, this is T5. I don't see any T5. T, anybody see T5 option? Uh, uh, where are you guys here? T8. Yeah, yeah. 32. That's it? 
T eight thirty two, but this is T eight, not T five though. Did you guys use T eight? Okay, let's not just better. If you use T five, this is where you're gonna find the lengths, the length and the type and the what. Can I get you guys to understand length, type, what? That's all what you're gonna do. Come on. Okay, so let's go for this. I think T five. If you come here, seventy two T five. If you use the, I don't know what everybody use different. Here's T five H O others. Um, here's a T five thirty two, thirty five T five. So this is where you're gonna find the uh, different type of picture. So let's just to make it simple, go here and let's use the T eight thirty two. Cool. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? T eight thirty two. Here's my what? Okay. Now the next next option. What type of ballast are you using? We are always using, um, let's use electronic ballast as your default. Electronic ballast as your default. How many lamps this fixture has? Um, who's, who did the TS? Kerry, how many lamps did you have in this picture? Two lamps or three lamps? Either two or three? Three, three lamps. So here's a three lamper. Uh, number of fixtures. How many fixtures of this type in this area that you put? Did you guys put one or two? Three. Let's put two. What? How many did you put in that area? Only in that area. No, this is I'm doing 124 is coming space. Yep. Okay, I'm doing 124. 124 is um, was one. Okay, did you guys get the number of lamps? Yes, please. Yes? Did you guys yes. get number of lamps? Okay. Now the watts. Let's go to the watts. Gentlemen, let's go to the watts. So T8, T8, I have uh, 88 watts. Did you guys get the 88 watts? That's directly from right here. The sheet give you a, the last column of the watts. I have 88 watts. I am done. I am done with this picture. I'm done with this picture. Any question about guys about 124? Let's go to so now. Suppose, suppose I have another fixture in the same area. Suppose I have another fixture in the same area. Uh, same thing, uh, linear light. Uh, pick uh, randomly. Uh, I'm just picking random things here. H here's how many uh, of the, these fixtures I have, and how many watts each fixture is going to have. Uh, say 55. Okay. Now here's another fixture in the same area. Do you see how I did? Now I made a mistake, right? I clicked it, made a mistake. What do you do? Highlight that area and hit delete. Highlight the row and hit delete. What does it do to you? Bam, done. Everybody understand how to put fixtures under area? You're done with this area. Let's move to a different area. The second area, 124. What was the space here for 124? What was 112? The corridor. Okay, can you give me the corridor uh, that you did in the corridor? Linear light. Uh, was it? Uh, what did we specify? Uh, forty-eight. Um, okay, forty-eight. Two-eight. Uh, how many watts? Did you guys do thirty-two? Okay, here's thirty-two. Uh, electronic ballast. How many lamps? Uh, let me just use one of you. How many lamps? Four lamps. Those guys use four. Everybody's lamps are going to be different. How many of them did you put in that particular corridor that we picked? You can just look at six of them. Here's six of them. What was the what for that one, one Zach? Thank you. One, one, two. Okay. Done. We picked the lights. Gentlemen, we picked the lights that we put in this corridor. Yes. Do you see what it says here? Interior lighting is way over the energy code. Do you guys know why? The ASHRAE 2010, ASHRAE 2010 is, is a lot of, um, there's a lot of, they make it very, very um, strict. So can you guys see what it says at the bottom here? Lighting interior, we're, we're 128 above. That's bad news. Um, it's here, we haven't done that. So as you build your system, it gives you the calculator here, there. Okay. Could you please not worry about this number and cook your numbers to match it? Please don't worry about it. Just put your number there and see what you get. Okay? Now, can I have thumbs up, Chad, that we, we know how to do things? Number one, we know how to add all the areas here. Number two, 
We know how to go to interior lights and add the fixtures under the light. If the area is not shown here, because you have it inputted somewhere else. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We know how to do that. Okay, then I want to input one more fixture. For example, suppose we have, uh, we have um, an incandescent fixture, God forbid, and I'm going to use um, uh, 140 watt. How many lamps in it? Two. And no bellas, of course. How many of them did I use? Nine. And how many um, fixture watts I used for this one? What did they say? 40. Let's say 40. Okay. So here's another fixture in the same area. Made a mistake. Click. Can you guys see it becomes dark when you click here? Make it, made a mistake. What do you do? Click on it. Erase it. You want to work on area one again. Area uh, 124, make sure you highlight it. You want to work here, highlight the one that you're going to work on and start dropping the fixture. I need a thumbs up, Chad. We know how to do that. Okay. So now, now that you got your, now you can start building your system. So that will give you enough time. Now when you're done, when you're done building your system, you're going to have um, a view. Where is it here? Uh, edit, no. Uh, can you guys go view print report? View print report. Everybody can see that, guys? File, view print report. When you come, one more time. When you're done, here's my project I've done here. I put all my interior lights here. I care less about the envelope. I care less about the mechanical. The exterior, I will do the exterior separate. Forget about the exterior. Now, let's just focus on the interior. When I'm done, file, uh, print editor. When you come over here, you're going to be looking at the following. Envelope compliance certificate. Are we in the envelope, the, the wall? So unclick that one. I care less. Interior lighting compliance certificate. Yes. Exterior, yes. Mechanical, no. Mechanical, no. So you need these two reports only. Okay. Click on them and okay. And gentlemen, you have just you got yourself a certificate for lighting certificate. See how it looks like? What do you do with this? What do you do with this? You could send it to um, the owner. Can you guys see all the information that we did is right here? All the information that we did right here. Look what our problem is. Can you guys see that? Interior lighting fails. Design 128. You don't want to send this to the city for approval. Make sure this green and it says pass. That's the only thing you worry about. That number is going to say green and pass. Now, please do not cook your numbers to get you a pass. Put what you have and get what you get. I don't care. So what happens if you don't pass? Not this class, no. What happens if you don't pass? You're going to go back and redesign your system. That's why, guys, LED is becoming superior now. The ASHRAE 2010 is so strict. They almost have to put LEDs to meet it. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? No, okay. We were using the other one with a key. What if you were using the... Yes, yes, you can, yeah. You could pass on whichever strict. The one that we chose is the latest is always the strictest. The latest is always the strictest. Did you guys hear me? Now you can pass on under one code but not the other. So why the, the latest code is the strictest. So I'm just going to show you guys here's how it looks like. It tells you what your proposal, what, what's your, look at what the allowed is. This is amazing. You are allowed 372 watts and you put 848, okay? You're not complying. All this information, you guys can read it and all this good stuff. Then it gives you an exterior lighting. We haven't done exterior. So also exterior lighting, we haven't done anything. So you give you two certificates. You print these, give them to the city of Bloomington. Uh, the city officials will, uh, the building official will review it. If it passes, okay, you have passed the energy code for the most part. Okay, you can print it right here. I don't want to print, obviously. I'm going to close here. I want to take you back again um, into the uh, options that you have. Remember the, um, okay, let's go to the project and options uh, code. Can you guys see the latest the code, the most stringent the code is? Everybody understand the latest the code, the most stringent. Um, I want you guys to look at this, and I want somebody to tell me this is... Um, Office space. Office, uh, we use third world, we use office. I want somebody to read this number for me. It says what per square feet? How much the code is allow you what per square feet? 1.11. 1 
Darren, how many volt amp per square foot in a commercial office the code allows us? Three or three and a half for lighting? Three and a half. Is that three and a half for lighting? So we want 3.5. Look at that. The code allows you three and a, three and a half or three. Now you confuse me. Three and a half. Three and a half. Thank you. Um, three and a half MEC code book. And we see code book and 1.11 uh, energy code. Do you see the problem? You guys see why? Now, the, the code for safety we expand, we make things big, we slice for big stuff. The energy code is to conserve, to be uh, to conserve energy. So, they strictly restrict you on it. So how are you going to have to have the heavy medium? LEDs. LEDs, redesigning your system with different type of fixtures. That's how you meet the code. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? How the NEC code book, even though we size based on three and a half, the code allows you in an office one point, uh, only one one. Look in the, look how much you are getting in a in a hallway. You're getting 0. 0.66 watts per square foot in a hallway. You're barely lighting that sucker. I think what the code allows us in point for lights in hallways, I can't remember. Uh, 220, let's just look at 220. Uh, a half. And uh, storage areas, um, warehouses, uh, a quarter in a warehouse, storage areas three. Anybody found it? Stairway. Uh, corridors a half. The corridors are allowed a half. Now look at that. And you see, allow you a half. The energy code allow you 0.66. So very close, not, not far away from each other. But look at the office, though. See the discrepancy in the office? Any comments, any questions? So that's how you get your energy code, guys, my friends. Um, that's that's how you get your energy code. Um, I'm going to let you guys chew on this. Uh, let me see if we missed anything. We duplicate here. Um, uh, options, view, envelope, view, mandatory requirement. Okay. If you want to go more information, guys, you can go and read more about that one energy code. Minnesota has their own energy code. Uh, you can read more about these um, options. Uh, common areas, okay, code. Let me go in the envelope. Uh, when we go to lighting, let me see if I have other options. Interior lighting allowances. Okay, one more. Uh, when you go here, can you guys go to lighting? I want you to add this. Can you guys see interior lighting? When you go to interior lighting, can you see when you go option, click interior lighting exempts and allowances. They allow you to exempt areas. Okay, so it, it allows you, right? Did you guys click it? It drops a column here for you. Okay, let's go exempt. Number one, see if we can exempt the, see what's exempt. Click here, um, allowances, room cavity. Um, let me see about the fixtures. So that's exempt. Here's the area that you can exempt. Are we in a casino and gambling? Do you see how they want <laughs> certain area exempt? <laughs> okay, so let's go here. Um, where are we here? Uh, let me see for areas, allowances, uh, okay. Um, for fixture, here's my exempt. Uh, ex exit signs, don't worry about them. Exempt, can you guys see that? Furniture, mounted, supplemental task light, don't sweat it too hard. Medical, dental, uh, plant growth, uh, lighting, parking, garage, all these are exempt. Okay, you can read through them. Uh, dressing room, mirror lights, really? Exempt that one we want people to buy. Okay, so you can see the exempt, guys. The second one here is um, allowance, allowance, additional control switch. Now that's take, it, take advantage of the allowances. Let's go to the office. Do I have an additional control switch? Decorative appearance, vehicle, uh, sporting goods, furniture, clothing, blah, 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 jewelry, retail. Um, do I have any of these? Uh, additional control switching. Do I have it in, in that room? Do I have 
didn't we have what type of control in that room office we did so why don't you I have then additional why don't you click on that one okay click on that one do you have a dimmer dimming control multi-level occupancy sensor yep do we have an occupancy in that area do we or was it a dimmer in that area okay let's say multi-level arc sensor number of fixture controlled I don't know if that will uh, how many fixture we have we have two of them okay so the same two control uh, I have multi by level switching so let's just say occupancy sensor and click it it gives you an allowance it will help you a little bit did you guys see how it dropped it I think it dropped it a little bit didn't it? at the bottom can you take advantage of the allowances at least the, at least the occupancy sensor on multi-level switching timers occupancy sensors let's go in the hallway in the hallway same thing allowances uh, additional switching um how many fixture did we put in the hallway i put six of them all of them are controlled um now dimmer do i put them in a dimmer um uh, auto control daylight no um how, how about by level uh, by level switching, primary, secondary, dimmer. Um, where's my um, arc here? You don't give an option. Uh, okay, dimmer control, programmable multi level control timer, automatic by level switching, primary switching, auto switch, daylight. We don't have daylight, primary area. Okay, so you don't, this is what you get. Dimmer control, no, we don't have dimmer control. How about let's use um, automatic by level switching in primary circuit um, effective. Okay, why don't they get the in? So every area, guys, depends upon the area gives you allowances. So take advantage of this. And again, these are new to me, guys. Uh, the 2010 is new to a lot of us. So I don't know. Let's say we have a by level switching in primary uh, side lighting area, and let's just say in the hallway. Um, I put uh, the, the 200 feet. Okay, it doesn't allow me. What is that? I have 0 0.1 to 2 uh, feet of total primary sh shedding. Let's say 20. Would that allow me? A specified valid for effective uh, is 0 0.0 is 0.1. Oh, I see. Uh, let's say 0 0.2 of this area. Uh, square point two of the square foot of the total primary shedding. Okay, so let's say that. No, point one five. Mm, okay. Point one five to point one. Point one five to no, it's a percentage of it. Point one five to one. Okay, so let's just say point. Why is that allowing me? Point one five. Zero point one five. Is that was that working for me? I think it's talking about the box of the yeah. Effective. Uh, so you put the area here. And thank you. I think one of us leave and I know who. And you put point two here. Okay. All right. Still doesn't give me point. Oh, you can't go point two, Chad. The point. Let's say uh, zero point one. Let's say point one five. Okay. Did you guys? Did it work for you? I put point one five. It did. Okay, so I don't know what I'm missing here. Maybe the. Point. Okay. Point one six. Okay. All right. So these are the allowances that you guys are going to get used to. Again, this is brand new for a lot of us. So take advantage of the allowances, especially the occupancy sensor. But let me just tell you guys, in the hallways, in the hallways, we only put, have 0.5 anyway. It wasn't a big deal. But in the office, they gave you occupancy sensor in the office. Because the hallways, we don't put a lot of lights in the hallways anyway. In the office, we do a lot. So that's why it depends upon the area, gives you different allowances. Exempt in the hallways, I don't know what the exempts are. If you click here, let's see exempt. The same exempt area, okay? Take advantage of the exempt, take advantage of the allowances. Take advantage of the exempt. Take, look at, uh, Adam, look what we dropped, 0.89%, we, we're dropping now. 
you want to see at least you, you want to see a hundred percent green here. Ah, okay. Do you have an area that's not assigned here, empty? Yeah. If you do, then it's not going to calculate. Go delete it. One more time. If you don't have the number at the end, guys, it's because you have, you have an area that hasn't been assigned a square foot yet. Cool? All right. So we got these. Any question, guys? Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions, any comments? All right. Why don't you guys chew on on this? So that will give you between the lighting calculation, all the stuff that give you enough to get your juice up, up and running. And then um, uh, the only thing I don't want to start right now is the exterior lights. You can dabble with it. It's right here, exterior lights based on the area and so forth. Same way, but I'll, uh, I'll walk you guys through it another time. Okay. Any comments, any questions? Is this good enough, guys, to do that? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mick, before you leave, save. Be before you leave, save. Did you guys hear me? Before you leave it, could you please save? Call this as commercial project. Save it. And when you, when you save it, could you please, um, guys, go to your team folder under energy code, under energy code, team folder, um, lighting, Amman energy calculation. Everybody, guys, find it under Amman energy calculation and save it under commercial project. Can I have thumbs up from every team that you guys saved it? When you get back to it, it will be saved in that location. Cool? I need it saved online so I can look at it. Any comments, any questions? Is this good enough, guys, to start your lighting calculation energy code? Okay, that's good. Thank you.